Hello. Hello, everyone. Hey, I just want to check that uh, I wasn't missing any conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, Bobby is waiting uh, for people who want to join. Right. Hello, Bobby. Oh, okay. Just I had been talking for five minutes on mute. Um, so I apologize. Okay, perfect. Uh, perfect. That's what I've, I've, gone through, I've gone through the meeting already. We're 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 well into it. No, <laughs> so let me start again. Um, hi, everybody. It's the documentation standard meeting. Uh, we're getting started a little late here because of technical difficulties on my part. Um, today. Um, Arunima is not here because she is doing something to complete her master's program, um, and we thoroughly support that. Um, but together, uh, we have tried to organize this call so that uh, we can achieve the objectives of the documentation task force slash mentorship documentation initiative for this summer and into the fall. Um, I am uh, right now where this group is, is that uh, it started as a task force a few months ago. Um, we analyzed the documentation, uh, current situation in the um, environment and hyperledger community. We've broken out into subcommittees where we feel um, that that documentation um, is categorized by because it's a huge, huge community, huge amount of information um, and trying to get it uh, so that all of the maintainers have easy access to the resources they need, um, users have easy access to the resources they need, and um, community contributors know exactly how to get onboarded uh, to the community um, as well. So again, we'll go over the subcommittees in a minute. Today's call, basically we are kind of regrouping and looking at exactly what our deliverables will be. Um, our deliverables, again, are our suggestions for uh, what the community should do. What became interesting, so we broke out into these subcommittees um, of best practices, uh, GitHub templates, GitHub read the docs, uh, regular uh, community templates and onboarding uh, with user guides being something that runs basically through all of those things. Um, it became very interesting. Um, again, one of the things that we're going to do um, as an end result of this uh, committee is we are going to do a lot of presenting our findings. Uh, mostly at the global forum, um, we will present our findings to the entire community, our suggestions on how um, documentation should be accomplished. First, we're going to do it through the TOC. They're going to either approve our recommendations or not. We will also be presenting this um, to the Linux Foundation as a whole, uh, because during our <clears throat> research and analysis phase, we he came in contact with Richard Reeves, who is the head of the Linux Foundation Strategic Development Department. Um, and he is fascinated by what we're doing, um, especially since we are trying to, or we will, I like to be positive, incorporate current AI tools into the documentation workflow so that it's seamless, easy, and everyone can uh, create the same excellent user guides with the same look and feel and consistency um, that makes Hyperledger standard the finest in the industry. So that's basically a caveat, like an extra bonus for uh, our little task force is that we're not only going to be presenting um, 
to the Global Forum. We're going to be presenting to the Linux Foundation, to the TOC, and also to the global community of meetups. Um, we're going to organize a meetup to present our findings um, as well. And the more we can use AI in this process, workflows that we suggest, um, the better off we are. So we've had uh, great people step up uh, to chair the uh, committees. Two people are on the call, Kajal and, and Gianluca. Um, we're going to go through a round of introductions. And then basically, we are going to kind of regroup as to what um, the recommendation deliverables look like for each one of the subcommittees. Um, so, Jan Luca, if you'd like to introduce yourself, that would be great. Yes, yes, thank you. And um, could I share my screen? Absolutely. Can I share my screen? Hold on one moment. Let me stop sharing mine. Okay, thank you. I just have to find my Zoom controls. Stop share. Okay, go right ahead. Okay, thank you. I'm sharing the screen because I have also a short presentation. Okay. I think this is the whole logo. I will change. Uh, okay, um, I'm Gianluca Capuzzi from Italy. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a software uh, engineer and uh, I'm uh, the chair of uh, the um, subtopic GitHub template. And I prepared uh, these uh, few, few slides um, uh, for talking about uh, the, um, how um, I'd like to contribute to, to this project. Uh, a beautiful goal, for my, in my opinion, should be to integrate an AI tool in standard documentation. An example could be chat, like ChatGPT, a GPT engine for natural language processing. Uh, for example, if uh, we have a, a chatbot uh, that can reply to our answer about documentation. This could be an example. If the TOC or in general the Hyperledger team will approve this idea, uh, I could go ahead uh, with it. And I, in the previous presentation, um, I expressed my interest in investigating in, in investigating this kind of tools, the GPT uh, tools. And uh, um, some of them uh, are um, free in Hugging Face uh, community website, but also there are other uh, websites and uh, other um, communities uh, with the, uh, that are working in uh, this kind of engine. And I studied a, a bit the GPT engine, and uh, I discovered that the technologies, the background technologies in this kind of natural language pro processing system are the recurrent neural network and the generative adversarial network. Okay, so now, the, the last week, I studied this kind of model, uh, and I also implemented an example using the IMDB movies dataset. The idea is very, very simple. If you want to, to see an example, I can, I can show you. And the, 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 the example is very easy. Um, I trained a ne recurrent neural network using this movie. And in particular, the, um, the review of the, the uh, of uh, that movies, and now the system is able to um, classify if a new review is a good, is a like, or a dislike. Um, I have an example here. Uh, the the system is already trained with uh, the dataset. Um, it took. It takes about three hours for train for the training stage. Now I just load the uh, system with the uh, existing weights, the existing parameters. is written in, in Python uh, programming language. Uh, the system uh, this is a, um, 
a short um, list of uh, the architect ar architecture and uh, it it asked me a comment and um, for example the more was very bad and uh, he replied me it, it replies me um, saying that the you don't like this movie I can uh, um, test the system using another uh, comments another review for example I like it but it's not good I think it is an error because the, the number the result is good 0 0.3 could be would be I like it I think it's it's a wrong reply uh, again I like the movie so it's, it's not perfect um, I also tested the accuracy the accuracy is um, more than the 85% which is not the best result, but it's a, a good um, system to be uh, studied and to learn the technology. And uh, for the, the next uh, week, I'd like to investigate the generative ad adversarial network, uh, which are the, um, the second technologies and model um, as background of GPT um, engine and uh, in the meantime also I'm um, studying uh, I'm having some course on um, uh, github and uh, also I I'm finding the um, uh, open source um, GPT um, engine so I think I yeah I pretty finished if that you have amazing. question Okay. Yeah. Also, I just to um, I also I can share again. I also find uh, found some um, other um, documentation on how GPT engine works, and I think that it's possible to train a system like ChatGPT with our existing documentation. And it uh, will be able to reply to our uh, as a question, um, sending us, uh, for example, uh, the, the answer uh, about how um, how to install Hyperledger tool or uh, with also the commands on Linux and uh, um, other other kind of um, uh, replies. So it, I think it's possible if. Uh, could be uh, uh, if you if you agree, Bobby and other people on the on team, I will uh, um, continue to in this direction uh, to investigate uh, if it's possible, and also to share the code and the documentation that I I found uh, I found and I am writing uh, at the moment. Um, absolutely. Um, I'm going to open. I see that uh, Rama has a question. Um, I'm also thinking of where this would fit in in, in our um, documentation. Um, I'm going to let Rama ask his question first, and then I'm going to ask mine. So go ahead, Rama. Okay. Hey, Bobby. okay. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Angelica. This is interesting. I mean, I, uh, just a simple question. I just wonder if uh, yes. you can use these techniques to automatically create an FAQ page. So that's one of the things which I think uh, many document writers struggle with. You know, you can you can write all the documentation you, th you can think of, but how do you populate the FAQ pages? So just wondering. Yes, I think so because the okay GPT has this uh, ability um, from the again the generative adversarial network to generate um, information data that could be an image or could be uh, a text and depending on the training set that we use to to train the system 
So I think it's it's possible. I'm at the moment I'm writing this uh, the code for a uh, GAN using the Google Colab um, uh, technology. Uh, so in that case, uh, is um, the system is uh, in uh, in the in cloud. The, the the previous example is Python code on my laptop. Uh, now uh, I'm um, I'm implementing uh, again in uh, Google Colab in my account. And uh, after that, the, the next step could be to start with GPT, uh, especially GPT open source uh, system. So this, I, I'd like to, to go to it. Um, okay, I, I don't know if, if you have any other question. Not right now, but uh, I, I'll, thanks. If I can think of anything, I'll ask. Okay, so, thank thanks. you. So Gianluca, let me share my screen for a moment. I want to show yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. how I feel this is going to incorporate. So this is definitely, um, and I know Kajal's on the call as well, um, incorporates with our, let me share my screen real quick, with more of the, uh, this kind of thing to me, like the FAQs is more of mm -hmm. a, um, onboarding thing which we do have a, a committee for on the task force um which okay. um uh, she's not here today um the head of that but um what i was thinking is so this is let's just go here first like this is the new website it's beautiful it's gorgeous you you see about mm -hmm. there's members governing board charter projects all the all the labs all the projects participate mm -hmm. and this is like joining Learn and use are, are confusing to me because I think learn case studies, use tracker, webinars, white papers. Excuse me a second. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's okay. all great. But I think that's all like great and, and useful information. But I agree with Rama. It would be great if under this use, there would be the first button of ask a question. Um, mm -hmm. Not even FAQs, because we want, again, like what you've shown, this robust system can handle if we can train it with all of our user documentation to have that button there. So you can, in, in your own language, say, what are my requirements for setting up a fabric uh, network mm -hmm. on a Windows-based system or a Apple-based, you know, like that kind of thing. So you can ask it in your language and it would give you, whether it gives you a chat GBT curated mm -hmm. answer or directs you right to the uh, GitHub repository, read the docs. Um, I don't know how that works. That's something that we'll have to figure out how advanced these um, natural language models can be. Um, but that's where I see it. And I not only see that FAQ button or whatever, ask me a question button, library mm -hmm. button, whatever we call it, I see it here. I see it here i don't i i, I it's, these frequently asked questions are are doesn't get anybody anywhere i mean it, it would be hit or miss if these questions actually answered your question <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yes, uh, it, it would be great if there was a button where you could just yeah. type in your question um, so that's what I say. And I see it also on other, other sites and uh, like all the others, you know, there's four other pl places, people on board into the community. I see that button on all five. Um, does anybody else have any thoughts on that? No, I, I if, if possible, I try to, to um, uh, have a short answer about your, your, um, your question. As far as I know, uh, is already possible to use the chat, chat GPT API to do that. But I'd like to investigate if it's possible using uh, open source uh, GPT engine, other other engine which are open source. Uh, with using uh, the chat GPT APIs, now it's, I think it's, it's uh, already possible to train the system with uh, using our wiki and it will reply uh, with the right um, answers and we also can integrate the system in our wiki but i don't know i think could be better also to try uh, other um, open source uh, engine 
uh, that could be integrated um, more suitable in our in our wiki. And um, once we have like the recommendations down in a, in a presentation to give back to that um, to give back to Robert Reeves. Um, he was saying that he is going to be interested in investing time and, and resources of the Linux Foundation to, you know, model what we've done for the rest of the community and invest in possibly some of the uh, tools to get them uh, where we need them. So, again, this is wonderful information for, okay, this is not working. Okay, um, I'm just going to update this. So that's great. Thank you so much. I would say keep okay. investigating that, that that's the way to go. Um, thank so, you. Thank you. Oh, no, thank you. You've done such great work. Um, so continue on. I know, Raman, you uh, briefly uh, had a question, but you want to introduce yourself and why you're interested in this task force? Sure, Bobby. Uh, I actually had uh, put my name on this task force at the beginning of the year, but I didn't get much time to join this activity. Sorry about that. But uh, in the last uh, Hyperage TOC meeting, and just for everybody's knowledge, I am one of the mem like Bobby, I'm uh, a member of the Hyperage TOC. Uh, I lead the uh, project uh, badging and lifecycle task force, which is just getting uh, started to investigating whether or not projects need uh, 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 badging to indicate how their uh, what their current health is and uh, at what stage of the of the project life cycle they are in so uh, bobby suggested i join the meeting of this of this task force to and because there's some overlap between what you guys are trying to accomplish and what uh, we will need to figure out the uh, the right metrics to to call out for a project's health so, thanks thank you and uh, shinji Kenji, do you want to introduce yourself? Okay, we'll move to Kajal. Hello, everyone. Uh, Bobby, first of all, a very congratulations. Uh, <laughs> like <laughs> you became grandmom. Uh, I'm very, very happy for you. And yeah. Thank you so much. My grandson is so adorable. <laughs> <laughs> Babies are cute. <laughs> uh, so, like, uh, I have like few questions. Uh, uh, like, you showed us the uh, website, the new website of Hyperledger. So, like, the theme is standard for all the like documentation website, or the project can use any uh like theme, color, or font. Because I was thinking like uh. I saw the uh, documentation website of many graduated projects like uh, Fabric and Bevel. They have different, different themes like the uh, color and the font and like the uh, accessibility and where the this button should be, where the content should be. Like all have like, they have like all projects have their own uh, standards. So like I uh, like I am the uh, I am working on the template uh, thing. So I would like to ask you that uh, can we like uh, create a, a template standardized template for every project, or uh, like the uh, template would be same like the uh, Hyperledger new color theme is like green, uh, green shades of green. So like I was absolutely that, that could be our recommendation. Yes, because like I, I think that will bring the uniformity to the Hyperledger Foundation. Like, uh, anybody when uh, any new user when came or uh, come to the uh website, they would like to see like uniformity everywhere, like the font thing and the like the content. Like we have about project participate this in Hyperledger a Foundation website. So like I would uh like to do the same thing for the documentation thing like i have talked to the uh caliper caliper uh maintainer so he asked me to like improve the accessibility of the caliper dog i would share you the link of the dog caliper dog
Kajal, you want me to stop sharing my screen? Uh, no, I, I'm sharing you the uh, link. Oh, okay. In the chat. Okay, here we go. Yes, yes, actually. And I think uh, Ram uh, Rama has a question. Uh, quick clarification. I Kajal, were you suggesting that uh, uh, all projects follow the same uh, menu or for uniformity, or do you want them to all use the same color combination? I'm not sure that is really necessary. I I, I, want uh, let, I want the uniformity, and in uniformity. We uh, we get the like same uh, color, same font, same theme, and same font style, and also the same like menu because uh, like the caliper uh, website is different. So like yeah. it shows that every project have like like as a user perspective. What I thought is like every project has their own documentation, and like they are working on like I was thinking to like it will show the unity thing. Uh, I. Like in short, I would say, because the caliper has uses, it's like uh, the color combo, which, which is like purple and all, bevel is uh, different, like, so I was saying this. So do you uh, want also the different uh, logos of the projects to somehow follow a particular color theme? Like uh, you, you showed... Uh, you had fabric, yes. the fabric logo just suppose with the bevel logo and they had somewhat different colors. One had purple, one had red and green. Is that something you want to make uniform as well? Uh, we can, like if we have changed the Hyperledger Foundation logo, so I guess we should also modify the other other project logo if we can. Like, yeah, I, can. Uh, I'm not sure um, if that is possible for us to modify the logos. Yes. Like, um, only possible. because yeah. that's like a, a whole. So I basically what I was just thinking was like, again, like maybe taking a like when you said color coding, like basically would be the documentation could be all in this color, Firefly yes. and purple, but, right. but the colors that are in their logos already. Um, I right. would use yeah. just just for guidance is great. Um, yeah, that's a great idea, and I would definitely. So let's just regroup for for just getting back to the task. Yes, because the a new website is like very uh, user friendly, and it is also attracting the user. So like there in the join button, they have also given the uh, bottom shadow. So like I was saying, like we can use the same template thing for the uh, project documentation because yes. it would bring the uniformity thing also. Well, again, I can't say enough about how much I like the new website. It is really well done. Uh, just yes, yes, it is, it is this is gorgeous. Um, yes, and also like the user experience is good. Again, though, I do think that it needs in use and learn that button with that AI engine that just answers your question. I mean, that would be a home run for this group if we could get that um, recommendation somehow defined. Um, I really think so. Anyway, so let's just regroup real quick because uh, I know we only have a little bit of time left on the call. So the documentation task force now, um, we've done a lot of stuff. We've gotten our name out there. Uh, people are interested in what we're doing. Um, so again, with these task force, um, we're going to do best practices last because we have Rama on the call and it's probably going to be the most uh, talked about one so far this in this call. So to regroup the GitHub templates, what we want as a deliverable is a suggestion. And I have an email to Tracy. I want to meet with her this week to discuss what she thinks. And I will put that out to the group for everybody to join. Um, what she feels needs to be in um, the GitHub repository uh, template for the maintainer. So this is the templates that, again, through the project lifecycle, what template would a maintainer need at that particular stage in the lifecycle? So if, like, for instance, Jan Luca's um, open source project about the chat GBT, maybe that needs to become a Hyperledger lab. Well, where would he look to get the template for that, what needs to be in, and I know we have one in the community, but it's really difficult to find. Again, organizing that so it's easy to find in our library, 
having a maintainer come in or like, for instance, Gianluca come in, say, okay, I want to put this up in a lab so that everyone in the community can help me with this project. Um, so what do I need? And clearly the template would be there. Same thing when we're done with this great uh, lab discovery phase, we want to put this project into incubation. What does that GitHub repository need? And tied into Rama's group of best practices, when would badges be earned um, for those? And again, we're going to get into that in depth in a minute. Um, same thing with the GitHub read the docs that we need to define. We know what everybody's using. It's all over the community. Um, so we need to define, um, we're going to have a meeting with David Boswell to define what each group suggested their uh, turning their GitHub repositories into user guides, again, with our color code, whatever we want, but how is that going to be uniform through the community? Give them the choices we want them to have, but still give them choices. Um, I'm just going to have to pause for just one moment and I will come back. Just give me one second. I can't find my controls. One second. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so the GitHub read the docs, um, we've done, where is this? I thought I had more information on this, let me just go see. So we've done an analysis of who's using what um, process for the read the docs. Let me just see if it's here. Sorry, I tried to avoid the dog barking, but it didn't work. Um, excuse me for scrolling so fast. Okay. Um, oh, that's the mentorship programs. Uh, here we go. So this was the analysis of what's currently in the environment and what people want. So as you see, for turning your GitHub repository into usable reader, uh, usable uh, guides, for people to be able to use the product, people are using different things. They're using Sphinx, they're using read the docs, make the docs. Um, some people are using, um, again, so it's all over the place. What we want is we want to be able to provide the community with suggestions for taking their GitHub repositories and making uh, them into user guides using, again, we have paid tooling policies. One of them is uh, the make the docs gives us extra bells and whistles. Um, so we want to sit down with David and find out what they suggest. I am not sure if we even need programs like Sphinx and read the docs now that we have AI engines who can take a GitHub repository and make user docs, we might be able to customize um, these processes ourselves. So I'm not really sure how that looks, but that's what we have the rest of the summer to figure out and into the fall. Um, so we're going to come up with suggestions for the entire community. So this is um, uniform. Um, as per the survey we sent out, that's the main thing people want. They want it they want a choice of visuals. They want um, it more to be user friendly. I know that I have spent more time uh, monitoring the forms uh, for, for Hyperledger. It takes more time for me to load the class up on a system and get the uh, uh, artifacts up and get the, the Docker. It, 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 that just takes too long. Um, and it needs to be easier, in my opinion. Um, before you even start using and defining your organization, um, it shouldn't take you more of the class to get set up. Um, so that is, again, something that this committee will be um, trying to get that GitHub repository more in a uh, usable format for people to test and decide if this is the way they want to go. Um, so that's read the docs. And these templates are just community templates. So if I am a business person working in trade finance uh, on their special interest group and I want to write a write paper, um, I want to have, oh, my battery's running low. Hold on a second. I didn't realize I wasn't plugged in. Um, I want to be able to supply the community um, ah, 
with templates for white papers so that they don't have to spend half the time searching for um, the easy um, template to fill out. Same thing for white papers, use cases. They should all in the community be kind of the same. Um, I see, Rama, you have your hand up. Is that from before or is that um, for now? Oh, no, I was, uh, you're talking about the different uh, tools one could use to build documentation. So just, I was offering a data point because uh, Tracy had a template uh, documentation using um, make docs. So uh, I was, I'm actually in the process of uh, finishing uh, uh, or creating a cacti documentation using make docs uh, with using Tracy's template as a guide. Uh, just to note that uh, uh, cacti has uh, both cactus and the Weaver Lab, and uh, cactus use Sphinx, Weaver Lab use Docusaurus. So uh, we're just trying to integrate them using uh, what Tracy suggested. So yeah, I mean, if you if you're uh, if you use Make the Docs or Make Docs, that would be work perfect for us. It'll you won't have to do any extra work. But yeah, it will be watching out for uh, whatever it is you recommend. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, that's she. Yeah, definitely make the docs is the one that we uh, want the community to use at this particular point. It's the one that we pay for. It's got again, it's all ready to go. We we want to encourage that. What um, this uh, subcommittee is is charged to do is uh, give a user guide for that. So what oh, you've okay. just done, we need a user guide for people so that they can do what you've done for their project really easy. So they don't again, have to re reinvent the wheel. Um, so if you would like to um, just jot down on this page, edit this page and put uh, uh, cactus, make the docs steps, step one, put a link to the template, step two, you know, hit this, but do that, step three, publish and let people know, like whatever. That would be great to get us to, 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 to get started. Um, because what we wanna do with this is we wanna introduce this as soon as possible to the mentors who are creating documentation for their projects so that they use this, the, the recommendations. So this one almost has to be done as soon as possible. So we were gonna definitely, but again, here's a question for the people on the call. Do we think from what we've researched with AI um, that a, a program like Pictory or, or Gamma, or I'm not even sure what, what's out there in the environment today, would be better than paying for make the docs like can ai take over for us and do the same thing that make the doc does now that's really not a requirement of this task force but that is a kind of a requirement that that for the linux foundation um, when they want us to research ai i think that that is definitely um, one of the things that we can comment on um, saying that that would be great um so what do you what are your thoughts do you think ai can do what make the doc does or are we overshooting go ahead kita i can use like uh, i can i think that we can use the uh AI tools and also like make the docs because uh, like in Gamma we uh, write a prompt to create a, a template or like design. So what we can do, we can uh, like we don't, uh, we have to create our standard templates. So we can use uh, the AI tools to create the template, the structure of the uh, make docs because only using AI tools would uh, like would not be like would not help us because we have to like give better prompts and we we need a reference like like every like every documentation that's it has used the make docs uh, template and all so like we can uh, use we can take the help of ai tools to create the uh, make doc uh, website i don't think so like only ai tools will be needed like only, uh, I think so. Interesting. Thank you. That's what I kind of thought as well. I didn't think how, you know, maybe further down the road, but not, not yet. I don't think it's there yet. Um, and again, I will uh, reach out to David, maybe have him come to our meeting next week. I know it's really early for him in California, uh, or maybe we'll have another meeting in the afternoon uh, where we can sit down with him and tell him our recommendations and see what he thinks um, 
as they'll, they'll go by. So just to finish up here, the templates are just regular templates for uh, the community, whether it's um, white papers or use cases. Um, and then the user guides follow everything. Everything's going to need a user guide. And I kind of see incorporating that with that natural language frequently asked question. I would like user guides to be attached to all the answers to those questions. So at the end of answering a quick question, a link to a user guide should always be supplied for more information. Um, and those user guides, again, that's for simple things like we're not talking about using the product products necessarily, but how to use things in the community. Like if I am joining a special interest group, how do I do that? If I want to create a special interest group, how do I do that? If I am a maintainer and I want contributors, how do I run a hackathon? That kind of guides for the community to be effective. Um, so they're different than the uh, GitHub read the docs on how to use the products. These user guides are just how to get a Linux uh, foundation ID. Uh, we want these little user guides to be everywhere, whether it's, I would love to see a consistent uh, avatar teacher throughout the entire community. When you ask this question, he or she pops up and t tells you the answer and where to go. Uh, but that, again, I dream big. Um, so those are the user guides. Uh, this is just where we store our presentations. And here is where we want to talk to the um, ment mentors and the project and tell them what we have to offer for them and offer our assistance in leading them down this new documentation um, consistency, hyperledger consistency pathway. So that's basically where we're at. Now, the best practices I'm going to turn over because this is uh, we talked about this at the TOC meeting about documentation best practices and, again, how they're along the life cycle, um, how that badging. I even suggested, again, I was listening to um, when Alfonso from the Learning Tokens Mentorship Program was talking about what he was doing, having um, the badging be tokenized and on a dashboard so that each one of the maintainers can go to their dashboard and see what they need to complete the next step for their next next best practice badge. So with that said, Rama, what are your thoughts on how we can work together on the best practices to uh, get this done? Uh, attend the best practice meeting, I guess. Uh, I'll, I'll start uh, to schedule that end of this week. Um, more specifics, I'll have to think a bit more. Uh, I think uh, uh, clearly there needs to be, um, uh, we, we should have some uh, one or more badges that indicate how well uh, or how mature uh, a project's documentation is so that uh, so that will be a metric that uh, the TOC can use to determine whether it, it ought to be upgraded if that's uh, on the, if that question is on the table. But yeah, uh, more specifics I have to think about a bit more. Uh, but please feel, uh, please join the uh, best practices uh, group meeting. I tentatively uh, will be setting it up for uh, Fridays at one hour later than this. Definitely, I will definitely try to attend that. Um, again, we thought that there would be the four stages, the um, entering a lab, going to incubation, graduated and maintenance that you would earn a badge for. Um, and then again, there would be uh, a matrix under each one of these, what you need to get the badge. Um, and again, on that dashboard, you'd be able to see where you are in your project for badging. Um, and hopefully that is in line with what you think the best practice badging system should look like too. Yeah, no, I think that's a, that's a good way to, uh, to start. Sounds good to me, Fana. Yeah. Awesome. So again, what we're trying to do, um, Aruna and I talked about, um, I don't know why I hit that button. I didn't want the mentorship. So again, with the best practices, we're, we're trying to define uh, what documentation best practices need to achieve for each one of these phases of a project. Um, and how to get badges for that. Um, hopefully a tokenized system, a uh, blockchain tokenized system would be nice since that's what we do. If we could do it ourselves, uh, that would be great. 
Um, and then the next one is the GitHub templates. We need to clearly define um, in a user guide or in a frequently asked question um, when you're creating a project, all the different um, stages of the project, where do you get those templates and how do you fill them out in order to get the badge for that? Um, definitely um, would be part of the best practices go really, really hand in hand with this uh, group as well. And then the GitHub read the docs, we're just going to sit down with Tracy. She has her templates. We want to incorporate them into our flow um, so that everybody who is creating a project can have awesome user guides, read the docs, and people can use their and test out their products seamlessly. Um, the templates, this is for community creating presentations, um, seminars, uh, meetups, any kind of thing that you want to create. We want the temp. We don't want you to have to think about the design of these things. We want you to just be able to open a template with the graphics, with the, with the categories and just fill in your information. Um, again, onboarding, there's the six spots that people onboard to our community and we want them to be able to get two clicks to where they want to go shouldn't have to be three clicking you should be a two click environment so if i have a question again if we get that uh jan luca i'm going to call it the jan luca chat bot on there uh we can uh really have that done in one click um but we'll keep our fingers crossed um again and user guides are just going to be wherever in the community that people have a question like how do i get a linux login we should have a user guide for that how do i set up a template we should have a user guide for that um and then um, again, supporting the mentorship projects, uh, we need to set up a meeting. So my to do is I have the email set up for Tracy. Um, I'll set up a good time and email to David to set up a good time. And then um, we have to set up a meeting with uh, the mentees who need documentation. So we'll put out a call to Min to have her uh, send something to all the mentees saying, we're having a special documentation for you guys, a session for you guys on documentation if you'd like to attend, and we'll set that up for some time um, in September. Um, so does anybody have any more questions or want to talk about anything that I might have forgotten today? I feel like I have a question not related to this thing. Like I have mailed you uh, a thing. Uh, could you please... Uh, see the mail and whenever you are free, uh, could you please uh, re re reply or response? Did you send it to Ledger Academy or did you send it to a Gmail? Uh, I sent it to your uh, Ledger Academy. Okay, uh, okay. I am way behind on my email for that one. I'm going to catch up this afternoon. So I will okay. definitely respond. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Any more questions? Okay, so I will send out these emails to people and then I'm going to go through these pages and just put a category on top of each one that just says recommendations. And if you have any suggestions that would go into our recommendations, um, if you have time during the week to put something down, that would be wonderful. If not, we'll catch up next week on how we're really gonna start setting up a schedule to present this stuff, um, our recommendations. So, have a great week, everybody. If you need me, reach out. I will be answering my email this week. I am back from vacation and working all week. So no more not being able to find me. <laughs> thank you, Bobby. Thank and you, thank Bobby. You thank you very much for your hard work, Julie. It's great. Thank, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, everyone. Great meeting. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Goodbye.